Thanks, Shauna. That's right. I'm here with Oracle Executive Vice President of Analytics, TK Anon. It's great to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. All thanks right, for coming well, on. Yeah, yeah. It's always, it's always fun. Get to talk a little bit of analytics here. Um, but lots of exciting stuff coming out of Steve's keynote today. What are, what are you most excited about? I mean, the just tremendous amount of AI innovation that's going across in the Fusion apps and the fact that it's just baked in, it's just there. Customers just get it as part of these quarterly updates is like super exciting. I, yeah. I predicted you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that prediction comment was going to come. <laughs> I predicted that both of you would do, wait, no, that was deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let's dive in here. Um, but to take a step back, can you give us a kind of state of the union on analytics and some of the challenges customers are facing today when it comes to analytics, especially in this era of AI? I mean, one of the main things is that analytics has been around for a long time with like reporting, data visualization, all of these capabilities. But fundamentally, there's, there's always been this barrier for mass adoption of analytics throughout an organization because, you know, we did a poll last year. I think you guys helped us with that. We surveyed thousands of IT professionals, business users, and they still feel like analytics doesn't really go all the way in terms of helping them make everyday decisions, and that's kind of what we're trying to do with this whole new data intelligence strategy and so forth. Yeah, so let's actually dive into that. How are we solving that challenge? How are we allowing them to make those everyday decisions? Yeah, this is a huge sort of like a directional change or uh, moving forward, I should say. Everything we've done with analytics is great, but we want to move the needle forward. That was kind of the vision for data intelligence, yeah. uh, with Fusion Data Intelligence first that we announced last year. Uh, it's all about moving beyond just showing the data to users to visualize exploring it, to actually using AI to make insights and recommendations to the users saying the data shows this about your business. What if you could take these three actions to kind of uh, move the needle in terms of what outcomes you're seeking, whether it is managing your payroll costs or uh, whether you're trying to uh, you know, ha get a handle on your customer churn, you know, things like that. that and we're kind of uh, investing a lot in these AI ML capabilities and intelligence in the applications powered by analytics as opposed to having these two separate worlds of applications and analytics. Right, makes sense. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because you talked about embedding AI, but really bringing analytics closer to these applications. We had uh, Heathrow on yesterday uh, talking about fusion data intelligence. So for people who may not know what that means, fusion data intelligence, let's just set that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fusion, uh, fusion data intelligence, or uh, fusion data intelligence, FDI sometimes we call it, um, it's really part of the fusion suite now. It's one, it was sort of a product that we kind of gradually, it evolved from fusion analytics. Last year we kind of expanded its vision, now we call it FDI, or fusion data intelligence. Every fusion, applications customer should have it. It basically takes all of your fusion data, leverages the power of autonomous data warehouse, Oracle Analytics, and adds AI capabilities on top, extracts insights out of all of that data, and then connects that intelligence back into the fusion apps so that you can go back into ERP or supply chain or CX and infuse intelligence uh, back into these applications. So Heathrow has been a great partner. I'm meeting with them uh, later today. I, I heard that they came over here as well. Uh, they've been doing some really amazing work and seeing a lot of benefits uh, with Fusion Data Intelligence. It really takes a lot of the grunt work around uh, getting value out of the data in these Fusion applications. A lot of customers face a lot of pain, you know, moving data out into another cloud, implementing a separate solution. We just make it all turnkey. Let, let's dive into that a little bit. You mentioned a few things, autonomous data warehouse, or Oracle Anal Analytics, and then the fusion data intelligence. Just to unpack that, give us a sense yeah, of that yeah, full I, stack. I, I, I mean, the way we think about it is, and this is what I talked about, uh, I kind of talked about this at my keynote yesterday, which is the overall offering in this space is what I call Oracle data intelligence. And just like Oracle has an application strategy and a platform strategy, sure. we have the same with data intelligence. We have data intelligence, packaged with our applications for Fusion, for NetSuite, for healthcare, other industries. But all that is built on top of a data intelligence platform in OCI that customers can use to build their own solutions. You don't, it doesn't, like Red Bull Racing can use the data intelligence platform to analyze data about 
their race cars and drivers, build AI models to optimize engine performance. That's nothing to do with Fusion applications. So the platform is generic because it lives in OCI, but we apply the platform towards these business use cases in ERP and supply chain and so forth. So OAC and ADW are the platform technologies which are generic, but we apply them for Fusion. That's what Fusion Data Intelligence is. And similarly, we're also applying it for NetSuite. We're also applying it for healthcare. HDI, Health Data Intelligence, a super exciting product that we have in the healthcare suite. So, so, so how would you differentiate that, that entire stack that you just talked about from what our competitors are doing? I mean, the amazing thing about Oracle, the thing that gets me most excited about Oracle is we have so much data. We have so much, da we have data in our Oracle databases. Right. We have data in these applications. The data in the applications are actually even more powerful because we understand what the data means. It's not bits and bytes. It's actually customers, suppliers, the, I mean, Order. it's GL, APR. We understand the meaning of the data and we also know when we get intelligence out of that data, how it can be applied to move the business forward. And this is something that no other uh, competitors in AWS, Snowflake, all of these guys, they are key custodians of bits and bytes. Right. Customers have to build these solutions on top, whereas we can provide these solutions out of the box because we have all of this business knowledge about the data, right? That's what makes us powerful. Great explanation. Yeah, so, so if I'm an analyst or a business leader or a team leader, what will I see with Fusion Data Intelligence? Is it like, Pre-built dashboards. What, what am I seeing? Yeah. Uh, first of all, you get first of all you get to you get to see the data. You get to explore, visualize it using really rich interactive dashboards in OAC. I mean, uh, OAC was uh, rated this year by Gartner as in the top three vendors in the Magic Quadrant. We're a leader in the Magic Quadrant. Uh, so you're using one of the most cutting edge tools to visualize, explore that data. OAC's got a Gen AI assistant now built in, so you can use natural language to interact with the data. You can, uh, we had a cool demo where Brendan, one of the guys in my team, he just uh, took the data home with him on his mobile phone. You just take a QR code and boom, the data just shows up on your mobile app. You can walk away with it and start to interact, explore. All these cool capabilities. Yeah. That's only the first step. Right. Then there is intelligence that we extract out of the data. We can now predict uh, things like employee attrition, customer churn, uh, what is the likelihood that there's going to be supply chain delays because right. we know the events that are coming in that can influence these things. And we can suggest corrective actions. Right? All of these are things that we're, going to, uh, we're offering as so, part of FDI. So earlier you mentioned like customers talk a lot about they have all this data or all these analytics but they don't really know how to use that to answer everyday questions and so those are some of the everyday questions we're answering. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What customers want to know is Okay, you're showing me this data that says uh, my payroll expenses are higher this quarter than what it was last quarter next year. Okay, that's great. What should I do about right, it? Exactly. Like, what does, I mean, should I close all my open requisitions? Right. Well, that's going to have an adverse impact because those projects are not, uh, some of my projects are not going to get done on time, or I'm going to have uh, morale issues in my team because they're not getting the, so. Why don't you take all of this data and give me a balanced uh, action plan based on the insights? So right. these are the kinds of things that people want. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and how are we starting to see customers take advantage of that? Yeah, so this is like, uh, so this moving from data and insights to decisions and actions, right. that's kind of the journey we're on. We're still, uh, we are about to roll out our first set of what we call intelligent apps for FDI. So these are apps that take the analytics in AI that I talked about and kind of connect it back with actions. And we, uh, we showed a couple of demonstrations of those and they're going to enter like limited availability very soon. So we are pretty excited about that. We've got a bunch of customers lined up to be design partners with us. So yeah, I mean, this is something that no other analytics vendor in the planet is doing. Yeah. So. So you're earlier, and, and speaking of what some of our customers are doing with this, earlier you mentioned um, Oracle Analytics for Health and, and Health Data Intelligence. Can you just yeah. dive into that a little bit more and what we're doing there? That is, a, Health Data Intelligence is a super awesome product. I mean, what it does is, just like we have like the business domains like ERP and HR and so forth, Health Data Intelligence takes all of the patient data, healthcare data from all of the EHR systems in a health network, some of them could be running in Cerner, some could be Epic. We also pull in data from payers, pharmacies, public health data. We bring it all together into a data lake and we process all of that data and we produce this unified health record for every patient. So we know Kendall's health history, 
Yeah. Uh, what she's been through, if you had a fall and had to go to your primary care physician who then referred you to an orthopedist, right. then you got sent somewhere else to get pain medications. We understand that entire encounter in your health history. All of this rich intelligence is collected in HDI and then we offer analytics on top and we again, just like Infusion, offer intelligent applications on top. So for example, we can do things like go to a county, I don't know, let's say LA County and, exp and show them that, hey, there is an uptrend in teenage diabetes cases in the last year. Yeah. And you might want to kind of take a look at, this is from a public health policy perspective at that aggregate level because we have all that data. But you can also go down deep into an individual doctor is about to go have an appointment with a patient and we can take the intelligence about that one patient and help the doctor have a much more meaningful conversation. Have you been to a doctor and seen the doctor like not even look at the patient and just continuously just in front of their computer exactly, typing right, away? Yeah, yeah. We can help take away a lot of that stress away from the doctor and help the doctor just have a meaningful conversation where Gen AI can sort of capture that history about the patient. Like, so there's all sorts of amazing use cases. There's even life sciences that we're getting into with all of this rich data. So I mean, it can keep going on. This is a super interesting space. I just want to, for the record, the example of Kendall falling, I did not push her, <laughs> just for the record. Um, you talked about AI. Can somebody fact check that really quick. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about AI. Um, how is that playing out in this analytic space for fusion data intelligence? In the health space? Yeah, no, overall. In, in general. So yeah, I mean, like, look, we, AI is, AI is kind of making its way into pretty much every aspect of technology, and analytics is no different. So we're embedding uh, generative, uh, we've, we've had AI in our analytics products for a long time, like natural language, right. uh, uh, you know, outlier detection, forecasting, the classic AI that you're familiar with. But now we're embedding generative AI into pretty much the entire data intelligence suite, both the platforms and the applications. So for example, in the healthcare case I was just talking about, we'll look at the health history of Kendall, including that fall you had. The we'll fall. Yeah, the <laughs> fall. Um, and we'll, we'll produce a patient summary gen yeah. generated by an AI model, yeah. so that when you walk into the doctor's appointment next time, they already have a, a nice English language summary that they can have a meaningful conversation with you. That's one example. Uh, some of these intelligent actions that we can prescribe to an HR professional, let's say, about uh, how to improve uh, employee engagement in a certain organization. Well, that's not such, uh, those are not just discrete sort of actions, do this, do that. Like, uh, you know, generative AI can kind of help uh, produce an action plan for those. That's another thing we're thinking about. On the platform side, anytime there's uh, if you need to generate code to go to data transformation, that's a technical thing. Code generation is a great example uh, where Gen AI can help. So we're investing in a Gen AI assistant to go help do data munging and transformation and right, right. auto-generating configurations in our data intelligence platform so that customers don't have to do repetitive tasks that other customers have already done and do it in a potentially insecure way. You know, Larry talked about it in his keynote yesterday. Those are other examples. And the AI assisted in OAC is, the, is my favorite where, you know, you just have a conversation with your data in natural language, right? Yeah. You ask questions and it, uh, it talks back to you uh, and, you know, summarizes what's happening in your business in, in English, right? So these are just a few examples of various uh, AI use cases. I love having conversations with my data. Yes. It's, my, it's one it's of my few friends. It's better than humans sometimes. <laughs> Next year for Oracle TV, I won't be here. I'll send my data assistant to sit here in front of you. Amazing. And you just chat with the data. Exactly. There you there go. You I, like I mean, idea. it won't be as good, but it will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I'll still, you'll have my avatar. Oh, perfect. Okay, okay, great. So it'll feel like it's me. But that's okay, right. perfect. I like that, I like that idea. And uh, I think for, for anybody watching this, you can see some of the demonstrations that TK is, is talking about uh, in his solutions uh, keynote from yesterday afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and diving a little bit deeper into analytics. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, TK.